نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري و يسر لي أمري و حلو الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, happy Monday um, So what were we doing last week? Which surah were we doing? I think we had two lessons of surah at takathur Okay, anybody remembers a high-level summary of what we did last two days? Mm. Okay, Rohan? Uh, I don't remember because like, you know, we can... Okay, just not even like, you can look at your translation and see. What were we talking about in the surah? Like, what was the main theme of the surah? I remember we did a we did a video, and then after that we did some translation, right? So, did you see your uh, your translation, Rohan? Yeah. Okay. Can you now talk about it? That like, uh, yeah, so I think on Thursday or maybe it was Wednesday, I forgot, but we were talking about the competition that directs mm. you, like when you start competing with other people, trying to just prove that you're better than them, it diverts mm. you away from Islam. And um, that like, in until you like get to your grave like you will realize mm. that like you know your faults yeah i think yeah you're, you're there yes that's right that things that we are so much into and we are spending our energy our thoughts our life our hours on just on comparing ourselves to others and as you said, proving that we are better or trying to get better until like we are in this race all our life. And this, this is a fact that we are in, in a race as if all our life until what happens, until like, you know, after running for years, we reach close to death. So we keep on doing the same thing, not realizing what wrong we are doing. And, you know, it's, that's a fact that people sometimes will not even realize until the day they die. They keep on doing this. They will never understand the real purpose of life. They keep on thinking that this is life. This just getting ahead of other people, earning more money than other people, collecting more stuff than other people, bragging about things that I have, all that, that that's all they're going to keep doing until the day they die. And what happens when they die? Then they will realize. And then also one thing that we talked about when we when we said kalla sofa ta'alamun, summa kalla sofa ta'alamun, when we said that we asked this question, why did Allah repeat this ayah twice? And um, I think somebody from you um, actually did answer that that this is one of one reason is that Allah wants to emphasize this fact that. That is the time that we will realize. And other thing is that it is very much possible that Allah is talking about us realizing this fact twice. One, when we go into our graves. And two, when we are raised from our graves, when we actually are in the day of judgment, then we realize that. Okay, so that is the summary. Let's go to our translation. So I hope we have our Quran books open. So we can continue with the next ayah. Okay. Okay. Kalla, meaning?
Lau. Excuse me. Yes. You didn't do I it too. Which I had to? I it too. So we started here. First I al hakum at the The competition diverts you. Hatta Zurtumul Makabir until you visit your graves. That's oh. I number two, right? Yeah, I just didn't write down. Okay, you can write down right now. Is anything uh, anything else missing? Anyone? Okay, we're good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Kalla sofa talamun. Nay or not at all. Soon they will know. Thumma kalla sofa talamun. Then or again. Not at all. Soon they will know. Kalla nay. Lau. Lau means if. Very simple. Okay. Talamuna meaning. Right here, right above. So this word is being repeated so many times that I expect you to know this by now. You know. Ilm, what is ilm? And that again. Same thing. We did that right here. I said, it means. Yes, she's an Alicia. Knowledge. Knowledge. It means knowledge. Good job. So this is going to be in bracket because it's not part of the word. With knowledge. Al Yaqeen. You know what Yaqeen means, right? That's a Urdu mm -hmm. word as well. We have a Yaqeen Institute here as well. Uh truth. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh to believe someone. Yeah. Belief. Right, right. She's the same thing as a uh, reset. Mm -hmm. Certainty. Okay, so yaqeen means yeah, you're certain about something. That means yaqeen. And here as well, let's do off certainty. Okay, and let me write down the complete translation as well. It's going to be nay. If you know with the knowledge of certainty. Okay. Here, one thing that I would like to talk about is there are like three levels defined. Usually, scholars define three levels uh, of uh, knowledge. One is called Ilm al Yaqeen. Um, sorry, uh, three levels of certainty. Okay. Uh, one is called Ilm al Yaqeen, which is knowledge of certainty. Then it is something called Ain al Yaqeen, which means seeing, you know, a certainty of sight. You know, just like we say seeing is believing. So that is called Ain al Yaqeen. And then there's a third one, which is called Hak al Yaqeen which is one step further than Ainul Yaqeen. So like example, like somebody, you were going on a highway and somebody said, the road is blocked. There's, there's too much traffic out there, right? So now the person that told you, or maybe you heard it on news, it's pretty reliable. So you're like, yeah, I believe you, you're right. So that is that is what? That is this part. 
el mulyakin. Okay, that is el mulyakin. When somebody brings you a news and you believe that news, that is called el mulyakin. The second one is ainul yakin. You actually drive and you see, okay, yeah, there is an accident. So now what? That is called ainul yakin. Now you actually saw it. And the third one is when you are hakkul yakin is even one step further. Like when you're really, really in the middle of it and now you're experiencing it, that is hakkul yakin. Okay. So here we are talking about basically two right here. Ilmul yakin is right here and then ainul yakin. That's going to come later. So let's do the translation of Latara Wandal Jaheen. Okay. Latara wunna. Whenever we have a la and noon shadda in the end, this means a lot of emphasis. Like it means absolutely, definitely, this is definitely going to happen. Like, you know, Allah emphasizes it to the utmost. Like, surely, absolutely, no question about it, no doubt about it. So we're going to write down Latara wunna. Surely you will see. Al Jahim. What is Al Jahim? Hellfire. Okay, another word that we can try to remember is because that's going to appear a lot of times. So, okay, so right now we have the knowledge of certainty, right? Right now, while we are here, what do we have? We have just the knowledge of Jahannam. But who brought this knowledge? Where did we get this knowledge? Sumaya? Yes. So we have the knowledge, right? We know that there is a Jannah, there is a Jahannam, right? So Allah yes. calls this Il Al Yaqeen. That's the knowledge of certainty. So where did we get this knowledge from? Where did who get the knowledge from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, how do I know? Like, okay, who told you that there's going to be a day of judgment and, you know, all these things? Who told you that? Allah's word. Allah's word. That's right. So is that a reliable source? Yes. Yes. So... We call this uh, ilm al yakin. This is the knowledge of certainty. Why? Because the source where we got this news is so reliable that we really don't question that source. And of course, we can go into deep dive into the reasons why we should believe what Quran says. And, you know, because I think, I don't remember if I did this with your class or some other class, is that Allah invites us to think. Allah asks us to ponder about it. Let's find out. You need to believe that Prophet Muhammad was the true prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran is Allah's words. Now, how do we know all these things? We have signs. Allah is our creator. How do we know? We have signs. Allah asked us to look for those signs. Allah gave proofs. Allah gives proofs about Prophet Muhammad Allah gave proofs about Quran. Now, once we are past that point, okay, we got it. Okay, yes. Now, either we, we say Quran is the truth or we say, okay, no, I don't know about it. But once we say that it is truth, then now there is no questioning about each and everything. Okay, why Quran said that? No, I don't think so. I don't believe this. Now we are past that point. Either we believe we agree to all the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave and we logically and intellectually believe that yes, this is the truth. After that, once we accept Allah as our God, we accept Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as our messenger and we accept Quran as Allah's words. Then we believe whatever 
we get from these sources. We believe what Quran says. We believe what Prophet Muhammad Sallam said in the Hadith. Then we don't question those things. Yes, it is a possibility that there are things that somehow may not make sense to us right now. Yes, the thing did not make sense to Arabs at that time either. You know, they, they did not believe that. How could earth be round? How is that a, even possible? You know, earth is, can't can you see? We are standing on it. How is that possible that earth is a sphere? But Quran said it. So there are things that still may not make sense, but we believe that this is word of Allah and science can be wrong. Somebody else can be wrong. All the philosophy that we have around the entire world can be wrong, but Allah and Quran cannot be wrong. That is our belief and that's what is our ilm al yaqeen right? That is our knowledge of certainty. Why? Because the source of this knowledge is absolutely perfect. There is no doubt about that source. A news channel can be wrong, which could be high, which we think highly, highly reliable. Even that could make a mistake, but Allah and Quran cannot make a mistake, okay? So that's why we completely believe that if Allah said that there's going to be a day of judgment, then there is going to be a day of judgment. If Allah says there is a Jannah and a Jahannam, there is Jannah and Jahannam. If Allah says he's going to punish those who do wrong and he's going to reward those who do good, then most definitely that is going to happen. And people are going to bring lots and lots of different stuff, you know, saying that, oh, how is that possible? How could Allah be that um, um, cruel, nauzubillah, that he could punish people? Well, that's not Allah's cruelty. That's Allah's justice. If Allah does not punish those who did wrong, then that's injustice to, to those who kept on doing good all their lives. So that is Allah's justice. Okay, so let's continue with this. Um, okay. Now, what happens now, those people who did not have this knowledge of certainty, what will happen to them? Once they see the hellfire, then what will happen? Summa, then. So, surely you will see it. Okay, interesting thing here is compare these two words. It's important to know this about Arabic. Surely you will see. Surely you will see it. What is the it here? The hellfire. Jahannam. Okay. So now, before we only had knowledge and we believed in it. But now they can see it. Now they're going to believe it with what? Ayn al yaqeen With the belief of certainty of? The eye, the seeing. Ayn. Ayn means with the eye. Al Yaqeen of certainty okay now when they see the jahannam now they will believe okay imagine people spending their entire life kind of wasted their entire life on things that were not even important just yesterday i was listening to some other um, talk it was like you know my own quran lesson and my teacher dr farad she said uh, go back like, you know, maybe two years, three years, 
think about it. Have you ever thought, oh, those things were so important for me. Now they are not important anymore. Do you have any such example? Like a few, anything or any, I don't know, anything that you had was so precious for you. Like you were like, oh my God, I cannot live without that. And now it's probably lying somewhere. Is there? Does, does anybody have any example like that? Or maybe any goal that was like so important. Like, oh my God, I have to achieve this. And now you're like, yeah, so what? It happened. I mean, you guys are young, but to my age, yeah. A lot of times I think, well, I was so much into this thing. And now, you know, I wasted my money on that. Maybe I took admission in some course and I'm like, I have to do this. And I did it. But then what happened? Nothing. It did not help me anyway. So a lot of times, you know, we have possessions, we have things which we think. Maybe you have some game that you thought, oh my God, that's only if I had this, my life would be perfect. And then you had it. And then you used it. And now you don't even care about it, right? That is the reality of life. That is what life is. Who knows when we are going to wake up on the day of judgment, we'll be like, we were worried about all those things? Seriously? Those things were important for us? And, you know, we missed the point. We missed the real things. Oh, my car was so important for me. My phone was so important for me. Where is that car now? Where is that phone now? It's nowhere. I don't even have it now. For some people, their home, their houses, they're so important for them. They want to have a bigger house and then a bigger house and then a bigger house. Some people are into technology. They want the best possible phone that is available in the market. And they just cannot be if a new version comes and they cannot buy it like right away. You know, they don't book that. What do you call the pre-order, right? So we are after all those things, but when we are going to be on the day of judgment, we will realize that all this was useless. No purpose. Okay. Let's move forward. Okay. Last ayah. Summa. Then. Latus alunna. Okay. As I said, la in the beginning, noon shadda in the end. Again, this has this word has been emphasized. But what does it mean? Seen Hamza Lam. Sa'ala. I think we did that before. I don't remember we did that. Sa'ala is for asking a question. Okay. Sa'ala in Urdu we say soal. So it's similar to that. Latus alunna meaning surely. You will be asked. Yauma is in. That day. Yaw means day. Yawma is in that day. On. About. An naim. An naim means blessings, pleasures, fun stuff that we had. Now, as we said in the beginning, when we're talking about, you know, having stuff, is like, you know, having a big house a bad thing, just like I give, I give an example, or is having a good phone a bad thing? Is it? We should not have it. We should just have an old car and an old phone, right? 
because we are Muslims, we should not have anything good. Riz? Riz is awfully quiet today. Oh, sorry. Um, my thing was sort of locked and my mouse wasn't clicking on it. Um, okay. No, this shouldn't be because like it doesn't like there's nothing bad about having a good phone or a good house. Just not to the point where you're bragging about it and you're like like oh look hmm. at this I got the iPhone 13 Pro Max or hmm. look at this yeah. I got the newest five million dollar mansion in Silicon Valley something like that. It's right. good to have it, but you shouldn't brag about it. Yes, and also not. <laughs> be in a race to just having just like i said you're just always into this your life is revolving around this that's where we have a problem yes rohan uh yeah so i would like to add that like um it shouldn't be distracting you from like mm. praying or reading quran or doing anything related to islam yes yes and always remember Yes, distracting on things related to Islam, but remember, Islam is not just praying and worshiping. And, you know, as I said before as well, you using your time wisely the entire day, your entire day is a worship. Your Islam is your life. Your Islam is not praying namaz. Your Islam is not doing Quran, just. Your Islam is just going to school. Your Islam is going, you know, even playing games. Your Islam is eating dinner. All these things are your Islam because Islam is a way of life. Islam dictates a way of doing all this thing, all these things with Ihsan. All these things the best way possible. Yes, we should not be just busying ourselves in materialistic world. That's where the problem comes. Having is having the best things to use is not a problem. But just having our life around these things, that's where we are problem. And the important thing here is the last ayah, it's a very, very scary ayah that we will be asked. You know, I might go through this last ayah one more time, you know, tomorrow. Because this is very important for us to, um, to know that this is very, yeah, I would say again, it is very scary. Imagine that you know that a principal is going to call you about something. You're going to do like you're about to give a test and you know that you will be questioned about this. Your teacher is going to call you in person and ask you. You will be on a different level on doing that test. So whatever we have in this world, look around yourself, look around your room, look around, look at your own self. Whatever we have, we will be asked about it. What did we do with it? How did we use those things? Whether it is very small or a big. So we we should know how are we using whatever we have, whatever Allah has given it to us, whether it are things that, you know, we have, you know, our materialistic things like our devices and our phones and our clothes and our food, or it's something which is in our body, our eyes and nose and mouth. We will be asked about each and everything, our time. How did we spend that? So I will spend some more time talking about that, inshallah tomorrow and then we will start our new surah uh, we will start surah feel so all of you please do find surah feel in your quran books tomorrow okay inshallah i'm going to see you jazakallah khairan for joining inshallah see you all tomorrow subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta subhanaka assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh